Welcome to the Mind of Business Success Podcast. I'm your host, Alicia Kramer. Our guest today is Chad Price. We're going to marry mindset, business, sports. Let's get into it. Welcome to the show, Chad. Thank you for having me. It's very nice meeting you. I know that you've been doing the whole podcast circuit tour here for your new book. I also know that the book is something that is really relevant to our audience. Now you, you're in, in the realm of business. You've been a successful entrepreneur before we get too deep into the book, which I really want to cover. I'd love for you to take a moment or two and share a little bit with our listeners about your, your business. Can you tell us about your business? Sure. So, you know, I, I guess I would be considered what people will call, you know, like a serial entrepreneur. Um, I've had quite a few businesses over my career. Um, I graduated from Rice University, went off into corporate America, just kind of like anyone else. And then I ended up starting uh, a couple of businesses at the time that was in 2012. Um, I started a nail salon and I started a company named Kettlebell Kings, which became my most notable company. Um, that company, we grew that for 10 years. It was acquired uh, after a 10 year journey. And I talk about a lot of that uh, kind of life lessons I learned and business lessons I learned kind of along the journey of kind of building a company from scratch and building a, a brand that's kind of a globally recognized and eventually acquired by a larger company. A lot of people are playing small. We've got an audience here of some people who are maybe not playing small. They're playing big. Super common for, for business owners to look at what they believe is possible for them. And in many cases, that's incredibly limited, especially if they don't have the family who is out there doing big things. A lot of us have been exposed to kind of the play it safe mindset. So tell us a little bit about your journey and what it took for you in terms of your own mindset and endurance to take something that was once just an idea and create something that really became such a big thing. Sure. I mean, I, I think it's one of those things that for me, it comes you know, more natural than for most, just because I have such a kind of extensive background playing sports. And, uh, you know, I think in sports, you realize you have to kind of grow and get stronger and faster every single year. There's no really time where you can kind of become stagnant or you, you get left behind. And I kind of apply that type of strategy to every business that I'm in. And fortunately for me, the, the team that I put together when we first started the company, they, you know, they agreed with that kind of similar concept of, no matter what's happening, we're going to be an ever growing and uh, improving organism. And that, uh, that along with building a social community and a brand that people wanted to stand behind and associate themselves with, you know, it, that really kind of clipped together, if you will, and, and, and made the brand. On your journey, I'm sure you've learned some lessons along the way. You talk a little bit about that in your book as well, correct? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, so many lessons. <laughs> so let's give a couple little tastes, a little, little, you know, a couple little teasers. Why don't you start by talking a little bit about the book kind of in a broader sense, and then maybe you can share with us a couple of those nuggets. Sure. Uh, you know, in the book, I kind of, I start the book with, it's in, it's in three parts, basically. In the first part, I really give you a background of my story and upbringing, um, tell you some of the kind of let's say, stories that are most relevant to me or the, the stories that stick out or come to mind when I'm thinking about how they apply to my business or entrepreneurial journey. Um, and then the second part of the book, I go into breaking kind of business down into basic 10 building blocks. Some of this is going to be obviously like common sense to some. A lot of it's just going to be really trying to just give you a structure to think about when you're trying to design a business or trying to design some type of leadership role that you're going to have to achieve. Uh, and then in the third part of the book, I have a, a workbook for you to kind of map out some of your ideas and really design a roadmap for your particular vision. And that may be different than mine. And that may be, is probably unique to you in, in, in every way. And I think really just getting yourself 
mentally in the space uh, to take on more challenges that you're currently taking on is one of the most important things about starting an entrepreneurship journey, just because the, the intensity of the problems and the uh, a velocity of the problems is going to increase quite a bit from an employee to an ownership role. What gets you fired up? Because you mentioned sometimes shit's hard. It's not always easy. It's not rainbows and butterflies. This is not for the faint of heart. If you're just, you know, doing maybe a hobby business or something like that, it's a little more lighthearted, a little more playful. If you've got a nice little nest egg and you don't have to worry about, you know, feeding your family or anything, then it can be a very different experience. But for someone who is motivated, they're driven, they are obsessed with growing their business what what's your juice like what keeps you going and pushing through all of that and continuing to grow well I mean I I was actually thinking about this the other day and I was talking to a friend that you know I think I would struggle trying to run a company that was already like the number one company Um, you know, like if you're already kind of at the peak and you don't really have any room to grow, you've taken, you know, the majority of the market, I I might struggle coming up with new strategies to grow. But when you're at a startup or you're at a company that's, you know, kind of the small guy, I mean, the sky's the limit. So uh, I look at that the same way I did as an athlete, you know, when you were a five-year-old, you dreamed about being in the NFL or the NBA. And uh, I look at my businesses the same way as, you know, I know they're going to start small and I'm trying to create something that can have the, you know, the, the fortitude to make it to, to, to the long journey and to really grow. So, you know, I'm building block by block, trying to give it a good foundation to be able to, to scale to a point where I can call it a, you know, a global competitor, you know, that's always my ultimate goal. And that's what I was able to do with Kettlebell Kings. And I talk about, you know, those experiences in the book. Awesome. Now, You have a background, obviously, in sports, and you make a lot of references to the similarities in terms of mindset. For those listening who love sports, it's kind of one of those things. It's like you got some people are like, nah, not for me. (laughs) Then you've got others who they're just in everything. And then you've got, you know, the those who just love to watch it. It's just, it's a show, you know, and they're sometimes almost just as passionate, I think, as the ones who are in it, doing it. What are some of those similarities with respect to mindset? For sure. I mean, I think what sports taught me, and I think what it teaches a lot of entrepreneurs and especially you know, I, I find kind of a similar mindset in other athletes that I see that are entrepreneurs or CEOs of companies is, you know, sports prepared you for both wins and losses. You know, you you, you understand that the battle is is going to is going to rage on no matter what. And so you, when you've had um, the ability to kind of have those micro battles through sports and athletic competitions over and over and over, win some, lose some get better the next day and keep going at it. That's a real reference, I think, for what life is like as a leader. You are not going to win every challenge that you try to tackle. And the lesson you learn from it is sometimes more important than actually winning because that will help you in the future. And I've seen that with the companies I've built. And, you know, I've seen that in my personal growth as a, as a business professional. So I can attribute a lot of that success to me knowing when I lose, I don't have to harp on the emotional uh, downside of the loss, I can really just focus on the lesson. What did I learn? What can I learn? And then I can take that into making better decisions. That is a powerful mindset shift. One of the areas where I see people really struggling, and because I work almost exclusively with business owners, I see this a lot. A lot of people are not comfortable with failure. They get very emotional about it. They take it way too personally and they'll get stuck in the mental fuckery of that sometimes for years. And they're still sort of going through the motions, but they're doing it in a really half-assed way because they've never released that negative emotional baggage. You've been in the trenches 
you've been both in sports, you've been in business, you've risen above a lot of obstacles and setbacks and failures. What kind of advice would you have for somebody who knows that failure is a tripping point for them? Um, I mean, I think you have to put yourself in those experiences as early as you can so that you can kind of get over that. Uh, you know, one of the things I tell people, like having a sales role, I think helps people, if, especially if you want to be, a, you know, a leader of a business or um, you're an entrepreneur in general, just because you get used to the nose and you get used to not getting your way every single step of the way. But there is a path to success and finding that path to, to success is what matters. The um, the amount of times that you try and fail, as long as you can get back up and try again, you'll have another opportunity to do it. And so uh, that's how I try to set up the businesses where we're always testing. We're always trying to figure out a better way to do things and trying and failing and getting better. It's just part of the SOP. You know, it's not like we're trying to avoid it. We're actually trying to seek out the opportunities. And that's kind of, that's kind of part of the process. During your journey, are there any, any mindset blocks that you personally encountered that you really had to actually spend some time working through and breaking through to get to your next level? Absolutely. I mean, so many. Uh, yes, yeah, so, so many. And I think that's one of the other things about being on teams. You know, I talk about this in the book is you, you know, when, I, when I'm on a large team, you know, you're on a football team, there's 100, 100 people on the team, let's say you don't you don't like every personality or every person on the team, but you form a system and a brotherhood or a, some type of camaraderie and you still, you know, work together to try to, su to succeed and achieve some difficult goal. And I think a lot of that helped me in business, but even more, it made me reflect on that kind of idea when I got to, let's say, the real world and my expectations of, let's say, people to have the same intensity level with me or people to respond to, you know, my type of communication or my type of learning methods. And these types of things were a pretty steep learning curve for me because I wanted people to be as intense about my ideas as I was. And I realized that no one was going to be like that. So, you know, it was up to me to kind of meet people where they are and communicate to the market where the market was so that I can actually achieve my goal versus, you know, wishing the world to be the way I want it to be. And wishing everyone was as intense as me about, you know, their work or whatever particular task they've been assigned with. The conversation centering around leadership gets into this often, this challenge that we oftentimes have as the business owner where it's true. Not everybody on our team. In fact, most people are just, they're not going to have the same vision. They don't, that's not, how they're wired. I had a client many, many, many years ago who would often say when we were you know, in his sessions and he was frustrated about team members and, and things like that. That's why, you know, there's, um, you know, only, well, he it was kind of not PC, but he would say, you know, there's one, one chief, right? <laughs> a yeah. bunch of Indians. Um, yeah. But the, the, the concept is pretty spot on. And what I think we need to remember is they're not always going to be the same. They're not going to have the same values. They're not going to have the same motivation. They're not going to have the same intensity. How have you found yourself growing in that area? Do you have any tips for our entrepreneurial <laughs> listeners who might be feeling that struggle in their business right now? Sure. Um, you know, the, the best example I, I like to give is when I started the, the fitness company, I also started a nail salon. And so I had to basically manage shipping heavy equipment and kettlebells and um, a kind of a warehouse, a, you know, a sweaty, hot kind of equipment warehouse. And then I also had to manage um, a luxury nail salon, 10 to 15 employees that did, you know, artistic nails. So working between those two different groups was not the same. Like I could not have the same types of meetings. I couldn't have the same uh, punitive measures for things. I had to basically calibrate myself according to 
what was actually happening on the ground versus kind of me expecting things to be, to be the way they wanted it to be. So at the warehouse, yes, I had to be tough on people because if you didn't like lifting weights, you weren't going to make it. And if, if you were the type of person that wanted every day to be easy and you had to come in and lift, you know, 45 pound kettlebells every day, you were going to quit pretty soon. So being tough on you might work. Whereas at a nail salon, I'm, I'm not trying to get physical intensity out of you. I'm trying to get you into a safe, creative space and a pleasant space where you can give the customer the best experience possible. And that tone and that demeanor that I bring is going to change the way that, you know, they treat the customers. And so I had to take a lot of that in consideration. I even, you know, I even went to therapy and asked my therapist, like, you know, how do I speak better to people so that I'm able to communicate these things? Because I don't want my tone to get in the way of my goals. And I don't want, um, you know, my football demeanors to be perceived as something that's not, uh, in, that's not basically in alignment with what I'm trying to achieve. And going through that and practicing that over and over and seeing my own improvements that helped me quite a bit in life. It was a very visual uh, example that you gave because they're so different. The the whole like vibe, the whole the whole culture of those two businesses is so different that it puts it into a really clear perspective. And within a single business, you also have those different personalities. You know, you've got kind of the you know, the, the, the marketing guys think a certain way and act a certain way and have a certain mindset. And then, you know, the HR people, that's like a whole different thing. You know, you're talking to them. It's like, you've got to speak in a different language. Plus we've all got our own unique, you know, idiosyncrasies and, and personality quirks and things like that. You mentioned you, did some work with your therapist. And I think that that is worth highlighting that you can you can accept that it's okay that you're not great at everything and that you need work you need improvement you need a little bit of outside perspective to help you make those internal shifts to improve in those areas of your life when you yeah. were when you were in sports you had a coach as a business well now you're a coach for for business people right so where where do you think coaching fits in I think it's you know kind of having the self-awareness to like you say know where where you need to improve and and accept the things that you're maybe not the best at and and what things could you improve on how effectively will those improvements be in your day-to-day operation so for me like when I started looking for a therapist, I was literally looking for like, is there a business therapist? Does that exist? It's like, you know, business, like, you know, at the time I never even thought of that idea, but I was genuinely trying to achieve two goals at the same time. And I could see my own struggle and I didn't want to struggle. I wanted to, you know, get past that hump in the road. And I, and I knew that I never wanted to just be able to communicate to one type of person. If I, if I wanted to be in the place where I envision myself in the future, then I'm going to have to be able to communicate to whatever type of crowd that is there. And uh, I need to be able to kind of assess that on the, on the ground and be able to assess whether or not I'm doing a good job on a regular basis in my communication to these teams. So my goal was just to find someone that can help me with that, whether that would have been a business coach or it ended up being a therapist um, or a mentor, you know, I think you can go in so many directions. I think where most people get stuck is they don't kind of have those goals of self-improvement. So they just go and they want the person that they're talking to, to improve them versus kind of knowing why you're there. And when you're there with a purpose, I think it makes it a lot easier for someone to help you with something specific. So in sports, for example, you know, in the off season, you know, I remember in high school, I would go practice with the track coach and that was specific. My dad and I would talk about, Hey, we work on speed in the off season with the track coach. That's why we're running track. I'm not running track because I wanted to run track in college, but I wanted all my other sports to be enhanced by the speed that I could create. So I kind of look at it like the same way with therapy and coaching and, and things like that. I, I think that's an awesome way of looking at it. I really like that you brought up the point that having that 
that's that clarity is really valuable. There are people who know that they have certain challenges and they will try to find a solution for that specific challenge. And they're sort of narrow focused, almost sometimes too narrow focused. I used to see that a lot when I had my general hypnotherapy practice, people would say, oh, you know, I need help. I want to quit smoking or I want to lose weight, or I have this um, presentation that I have to do and I am terrified, you know, can you fix me basically? The people that I loved working with and who I saw the greatest transformation, like not just in that one area, but like overarching growth and expansion was people who are more open-minded and they recognize, holy shit, I got to change all this stuff within me so I can be better, so that I can succeed, so that I can grow, I can thrive. And it's not just for my business, it is for my wife or my husband and my kids and my employees and just being a better person. And there's so much more fulfillment on the journey when you're looking at it, not like there's this thing that's wrong with me and I need to fix that thing. It's more of like, how can I be a better version of me? Absolutely. And I mean, I think that's the best way to look at it is if you don't look at it like that, you're going to struggle in those leadership roles because you will take it personal because everything becomes a negative. And I, I don't look at it like that at all. Like I, I am much prouder of myself having gone through that process and being able to communicate better and seeing myself improve than I ever would be still kind of stuck in that rut that I was in. And I don't think if you don't have sport, it's hard to get those uh, trial and errors and those cycles of improvement really fast and, and get that sense of, okay, that's how it works. And I think a lot of entrepreneurs trip up in the first, you know, year or two of just kind of getting bombarded with problems or with things that make them feel negative about themselves. And rather than looking at that as a, you know, I know everywhere I need to improve, it's kind of like, now I know all my flaws and I, I, just, I just see it from a different lens, I think. Love it. So I know we are running out of time. And I want to make sure that we're directing our listeners to your book and anywhere else that you want to send them to. So can you share with our listeners how they can connect with you? Sure. You can find me on pretty much all social media, Real Chat Price. Uh, also on my website, chatprice.com. My book, Preparing for Battle, written by obviously me, Chat Price. You can find that on Amazon, but it, it's on my website as well. So website is probably the best place to start, but you can find me in a lot of places. Awesome. I want to thank you so much, Chad, for being with us today. I love your take on sharing that mindset between business and sports. And I'm not big into playing sports personally, but I have to say that um, I really respect athletes and I'm always looking at it from the lens of mindset and you can see who's doing their work and who's not. You can tell when a professional is like going above and beyond just the bare minimum. It shows in their performance. It shows in their success. And I, I think it is a really, really powerful way to help bring a slightly different approach into the business mindset that maybe some conventional business mindset experts and gurus and stuff, they're kind of missing some of those Absolutely. key pieces. Absolutely. Well, I've also got to thank all of our listeners. You know, we're doing this for you. If you haven't already subscribed, make sure you do so. And until next time, we will see you in the next episode.